The pipeline emerges on the surface in the south of Sakhalin Island. And here, natural gas is subject to an incredibly unusual transformation. This complex was built on the coast of a bay with a melodious name, Aniva. Whether you like it or not, rhythm is in the air. The scenery is truly stunning. The bay is free of ice in winter, and therefore this is the perfect place for year-round oil and gas shipments. Oil is at first fed into these tanks, and then bumped onto sea tankers. Yet methane will have to pass two more tests before shipment. Pressure and temperature tests. Methane changes its physical state here. In brief, at the plant inlet, it is still in its usual gaseous state. While at the outlet, it takes on a very unusual and very cold liquid form. LNG in scientific terms. The fact is that natural gas in its liquid state takes up about 1 600th the volume. Admittedly, it must be cooled down for this to a significant extent, down to minus 165 degrees. Naturally, there are no such temperatures on Earth. The lowest value ever recorded was in Antarctica in 2010, minus 98 degrees. Climatologists say it might drop to minus 100 in deeper areas. However, that is not enough to liquefy gas. But people are able to overcome nature's barriers with technology. Day and night, this plant does what the climate of our planet is unable to do. It cools methane down to a cryogenic temperature at an industrial scale, making it liquid and thereby reducing its volume. The plant has a borderline. It is not demarcated in any way, but experts know that here, Gas is still in its usual, if I may say so, dry state. From here, it gradually converts into liquid. A logical question is, why do we need all this? Colossal energy input, formidable technology, enormous volumes of liquefied gas. Why? The answer is simple. Logistics and economy. The more hydrocarbons one vessel can carry, the cheaper it is to transport. Methane gas compressed to 1 600th its original volume is very lucrative for shipping. This trick will not work with oil. It's almost impossible to reduce its volume by compression. Probably, a non-expert might have a seemingly logical question. Where is the very place where gas turns into a liquid? The answer is so short that it may surprise everyone. There is no such place. The whole process is stepwise. First, Air cooling with fans. The temperature of the methane falls. Then it is passed through the cooling units, step by step. The temperature of the methane falls. More and more. And stop. 
Now comes the tricky part. If the coolant cools the methane, what cools the coolant? The most common way to achieve low temperatures is the same. For large cryogenic plants, and let's say for your refrigerator or air conditioner. This is when gas is compressed and passes through a flow resistor in the pipeline. A choke. In other words, through a narrow hole. After passing through the choke, the gas expands quickly and its temperature decreases. Thus, methane is cooled down step by step to the target, minus 165 degrees, becoming a liquid, shrinking in volume, fed to the tanks for storage. These are, in fact, giant thermoses. As the poet Yesenin said, we should step back for better observation. Well, of course, this sounds nice, but in order to perceive the true size of these structures, you need to climb them. And then you feel how colossal they are when you are walking, just like this, on the top of a 100,000 cubic meter tank. Yes, this is certainly a tremendous thing. Afterwards, the liquefied natural gas just sits and literally waits on the weather until it is time for the final step. This 805-meter jetty is sometimes called the last link in the LNG chain. Well, it is more like an arterial road with a very unusual vessel at the end, one that carries gas a gas carrier. Gas carriers arrive at the Prigorodnoye production complex on average 15 times per month. And here is a question. What are these huge white spheres on the gas carrier? Well, it's clear they contain liquefied gas. Why are they shaped so? In fact, it is simple. A sphere is an efficient volumetric shape. Moreover, during sea shipment, the methane remains in a liquid that is supercooled state. So each gas carrier tank has powerful heat insulation. Right angles could reduce their effectiveness. Though, to tell the truth, there are different types of gas carriers. For example, some have tanks integrated into the enclosure. These are called membrane tanks. They also carry LNG to the pre production complex. 